Uh, this is an interview with Grace Marie Steinseifer, uh, the historian of the First Baptist Church in Sanford. And uh, this interview is being conducted on July 13, 2010, at the Museum of Seminole County History. The interviewer is Diana Dombrowski, representing the museum for the Histo Historical Society of Central Florida. Um, I'd just like to start with a couple basic questions, like uh, where and when were you born? I was born in Sanford, oh. Vernal Lawton Memorial Hospital. Oh, cool. <laughs> When were you born, if you don't mind? September 19th, 1936. Okay. So you grew up in Sanford? Yes. Where uh, did San in Sanford did you live? Could you describe it? I lived at 2404 Park Avenue. Oh. And at the time that was, uh, Park Avenue was the, uh, was 1792, it was the highway. Hmm. Okay. Did you live close to the, um, the railroad station or anything? No. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Um, my last interviewer, Betty Skates, she lives actually uh, off of Park Avenue yes. as well. And she mentioned her um, family arriving on the train. Oh, okay. So I wasn't sure how close it was. No, that's I'm sorry. way out of town. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Um, how, uh, when did your family come to Florida? Uh, my mother came here in 1913, I believe, as an eight-year-old with oh. her family. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, what what did my, your... Oh, I'm sorry. And my dad came in 1926. What did um, their families do here? My uh, mother's father was a butcher. He had a uh, store down on uh, First Street. Okay. A grocery store, butcher shop, whatever. Mm -hmm. and my dad's family, his dad was a farmer in Tennessee. Oh. He was born in Spring City, Tennessee. My mother was born in Butte, Montana. Wow. <laughs> That's a way. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a story there. But <laughs> what brought them to Florida? I really don't know. Um, my, mother, my grandmother and grandfather... My grandfather was from England. He came over... Wow. To uh, the gold rush in Canada, Alaska was the, what's the, what was the word? Anyway, and they met in Montana. I have no idea why my grandmother was there. And they married in Montana. My mother was born there. Uh, my aunt Gladys was born in Phoenix, Arizona. My uncle Jack wow. was born in Homeland, Georgia. And my <laughs> uncle Bill was born in Sanford. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of traveling. <laughs> yes. Wow. Um, did you uh, were did you grow up around all these relatives? Uh, not, not those. No, my my grandfather Stemper, my mother was Marie Stemper, uh, left the family. Oh. And uh, I think about 1925. Okay. And I didn't find him until. 1960, I believe it was, in mm. Baton Rouge. Mm. There was, yeah, there was, <laughs> that was quite a thing. Um, growing up in Sanford, were you always a member of the Baptist Church? I was always attended. I joined, okay. the, ch I joined the church in 1947. Okay. All right. Um, what did your uh, parents do? Uh, you know, uh, was your mother a homemaker? My mother was a school teacher. Okay. Where did she teach? She taught. She taught at Sanford Grammar, Sanford Junior High, and Sanford and Seminole High School. Okay. Um, where did you go to school? Did you go to those as well? Yes. Okay. Also, uh, Southside Primary. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to find out a little more about what it was like to grow up in Sanford. Uh, how was it different from then? What changes did you see, you know, uh, and witness growing up? Uh, do you have any favorite memories growing up? Oh, Dad? Goodness. Oh, goodness. It was a fairly small town back then, about uh, 10, 12, 15,000. Hmm. Uh, it was a fairly close-knit community. You knew 
almost everybody, everybody, you know, that you went to school with or knew of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, the, uh, it was a time when most people attended church. I think it could be because there wasn't much else to do, but I think it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, all the churches, the downtown churches, are very, very active, and uh, the youth groups were, you know, really overflowing, and it was a, really a great time to grow up um, through that. Um, we, um, some of the memories I think some of us have are some of the, everybody always mentions the drugstores, you know, Preston Drugstore, where we congregated downtown. And Ronald Anderson, no, uh, yeah, Ronald Anderson was also downtown. And uh, McReynolds Drugstore was at 25th and Sanford Avenue, and he had curb service and delicious milkshakes. Oh. And a lot of the uh, fellows worked at some of these uh, uh, drugstores. Then there was the Pig and Whistle, had a big uh, drive-in space there. It was at 25th and... Uh, park, and then Angel's Eat Shack was a restaurant. It's still there, the building, on uh, 25 something uh, Sanford Avenue. I mean, people that era when I grew up, those were the. What <laughs> much else? We had a lot of good memories at all those places, and the zoo. Oh. Yes, the zoo downtown. Uh, I was part of the Girl Scouts. We met down at the old depot. Down okay. uh, where the Sun what's the bank? Sun Trust Bank is down in that right down in there. Every Friday afternoon from the time I was ten years old till I graduated from high school. Oh it was really, really good. A lot of we had a lot of good memories there. What did you do in the Girl Scouts? Uh well we went, you know, of course, we went through the Girl Scout handbook, learning, learning all the things for the badges and things. We, and we'd have uh, slumber parties down there, and Miss Hinton, who was our leader, I can remember her sitting up in the middle of the, <laughs> the, middle of the depot. It was a big depot. Well, you know, keeping an, an eye on us as we... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, throughout <laughs> the night. Uh, we went camping. Oh. I, I still don't know where it was that we camped. It was <laughs> somewhere west of town with a lake and a and a um, um, just sort of a. It was a. The kitchen was very primitive, <laughs> and the and a, 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 a long table, you know, where we ate. Mm -hmm. And the outhouse we called the commissie. Because once some commissioner had had it built, <laughs> that, that was a story. I don't know. <laughs> but that that was fun. We you know pitched tents. We were only there about three nights or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Got to know a lot of the older girls that way because they were our leaders, and then we became leaders. Were you a leader in the troop? Well, we all were when we got to, you okay. know in, later on in high school. We led the little ones, oh. <laughs> the older younger ones. That's nice. Um, did you go to college? Yes. I went to Maribel College in Tennessee for two years, and then I transferred to Stetson, and I graduated okay. in 1958. Did you graduate uh, with plans to become a teacher? Yes, I majored in elementary education. Okay. <laughs> did you get married? No. Okay. Uh, where did uh, you begin teaching? I began teaching at Lake Silver Elementary in uh, Orlando, oh. and I had an apartment over there in Winter Park for three years. Winter Park is nice. What were, um, what do you remember from living there? From living in Orlando? Yes, in Winter Park. In Winter Park. Uh, well, it was a much smaller place then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was able to drive around, you know, and not get lost, or too much <laughs> lost. Um, um, I became a member of uh, North Park Baptist Church and thoroughly enjoyed it and made a lot of good friends, several that I still in contact with.
contact with. Mm. Dr. Edgar Cooper was my pastor, and he later became um, editor of the Florida Baptist Witness, which is the state newspaper. Oh. I taught fifth grade. What was the um, education system like? What was it like to teach then as it is, um, as maybe compared to the way it was when you taught? The kids were much more well behaved. Really? (laughs) (laughs) There was more parent participation. Okay. Um, Yes. I only taught over there three years. Oh. And I could not afford to continue to. <laughs> I was making $360 a month. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and not being paid in the summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I'd, you know, I'd come home and borrow money from my dad to get through the summer, and then I'd get him paid back by Christmas. So <laughs> I figured that, that couldn't last too long. So I moved back home to Sanford in 61. Okay. I could not find a teaching job in the elementary schools in the upper grades that I, in Sanford. So I went down to the personnel director, Stuart Gatchell, so see if he could help me. And he had taught me in math in high school. He said, mm. you'd make a good math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and he sent me up to Mr. Bracken, the principal of Seminole High, and he hired me. Wow. So I had to go back to school. And get certified in math. Did they pay your way through school? Oh, heavens no. Oh. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) How long, um, when did you begin teaching there? The fall of 61. Okay. How long did you teach there? I officially retired in 92, but I had been on, I had been on medical leave for a few years before that. Okay. So all that time at Seminole High School? Yes. You must have seen a lot of things. <laughs> High school, wow. That um, I've heard that's a really hard uh, time to teach. Um, I think junior high is the worst. Really? Yeah. Okay. I remember even when I was a junior high. <laughs> uh, no, I thoroughly enjoyed it, especially the first, the 60s were really good. Yeah? Yes. I had really, really good students then, and I still keep in contact with a lot of them. Go to their reunions and so on. That's nice. Now, you've probably heard this story about uh, when, um, you know, integration came. I was going to ask. Yes. Yeah. First, I think it was about 1967 or 8, something like that, they had something called Freedom of Choice. I think that was what it was called. And the black students could uh, attend the white schools. I think they had to apply or something. So we did have a few black students there in the late 60s. Then in uh, 1970, they closed crooms. Mm. And the croom students came over to Seminole High School. Seminole High did, did, did not want them. Crooms did not want to be there. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds tense. That year, that year, 1970-71, was terrible. We were on double sessions. Mm. Um, I was only teaching in the afternoon session. And in the mornings, they would have had fights and all kind of problems, and I'd get to school about 10 or 10.30, and they'd already closed school mm. several times. So it was that was a bad year. And the early 70s was still pretty hard. How were the students... Um who elected to go to the school received. You mean in the late the pro, or the, or in the yes. early program? Yes, they received very well. They, okay. were the, they were the very good students. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. In fact, one of the boys uh, was served as president of his, of his senior class. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Um, how long did it take for uh, black students to be more accepted in the high school? Do you think they are... Now, did they end up building another high school, you know, oh, no. that served that neighborhood? No, no, no. They're, they're okay. all at someone else there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, it's the only high, school, did, only high school in Sanford. So. Okay. I didn't know that. Uh-huh. Um, well, they've got the 
They've, oh, they've done something the crooms. I haven't kept up, but it's a, a school of technology or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that's just been recent years. Okay. <clears throat> and, they, and they then they and they, then they later made the school into a ninth grade center. I guess right after we merged, somewhere in there. So all the ninth graders went there mm. until they've. Uh, then a few years later, all the ninth graders came back to Seminole High. Okay. I don't, can't remember the years. How were the rest of the 70s like in terms of tension at the school? How did it end, what, did it end up getting resolved somehow? Gradually. Okay. Gradually. It, it was, it was hard. Okay. It really was. And there was still one thing that always irked me was, uh, the first couple of years was okay, you know, in the, in the, uh, uh, homecoming. Mm. They'd have a black queen and a white queen. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that just kept on for years, and I thought, you know, can't we get together? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's like two separate worlds. In I know. I, don't, I know. It, it was. It was bad. Wow. Uh, yeah, and they graduated. Well, I think there's always going to be a little tension, mm-hmm. but uh, it gradually got better. Okay. Uh, how did things like um, Cape Canaveral affect, uh, you know, the opening of the Space Center? Did you see any effects from that uh, in Sanford? Like people coming here for the space industry, or did you teach anyone related to that? No. Okay. No, no the, the Navy base Okay. was here. Okay. So as I taught a lot of Navy students in the 60s. Of course, the, the Navy moved from here in 68. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yes. A lot of Navy kids. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and the uh, school, Seminole High, was right in the pattern of the Jets. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> when they'd have their touch and go, uh, you know, to practice on landing on the carriers, it would come right over Seminole High. And that, you know, they would come and then there'd be a lull and they'd come, you know, just keep <laughs> on coming. And you just have to learn to. <laughs> Teach <laughs> in between in the coming and goings. How did uh, the town change after the base left? Do you think did the population drop very dramatically? Oh, I can't go in. Uh, probably a little bit. Okay. Yeah, you know, something like that always affects things. But then something else comes along, and yeah, you know. yeah. What but was that? But Sanford was a very good Navy town. Okay. They. Uh, the personnel always seemed to think Sanford was a good place to be, and a lot of Navy people retired here. Mm. Uh, I have a couple more questions about general events like that, like the opening of Disney. Did you, um, what, did, what do you remember from when Disney opened down here? Mm. <laughs> was it very significant at all? Well, I guess it was. Yeah, it was exciting to go down there the first time or two. Okay. Uh, but as you realize, uh, gradually the <laughs> the um, impact has come up to Sanford because of the growth. Mm-hmm. That's what really uh, brought the growth to Seminole County. Yeah. What do you think about that? Do you think that's a positive thing? Oh, in some ways, but I'd rather it go back to, you know, the old days with the smaller population. Yeah, yeah. But can't go back. <laughs> <laughs> um, through this time, you know, that you were a member of the Baptist Church, uh, was um, the church very involved in community activities? Do they have, like, local events, you know, or do they throw annual... Um, parties in the town or something? Or how were they involved in the community? Ah, <laughs> uh, how were they involved in the community? Well, uh, you know, did they um, take measures to feed or serve the homeless or anything? We do okay. now. We okay. do now. Okay. Uh, yes, we have a program on Sundays. Uh, I think about one thirty, they feed the homeless, and they had about forty or fifty. 
Okay. They come, and they have a, oh, they have a devotional and so on, you know, like that. I really don't know exactly what the program is, but yes. Uh, how has the church changed during your time as a member or as a historian? Has it changed at all? Yes. <laughs> Yes, it's changed. It used to be a very large church uh, with a lot of uh, a lot of young people. We, when I was growing up, we had uh, probably my high school class. We had about half the class at mm. First Baptist. Wow! Of course, we were hundred, just a little over a hundred in the class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe not quite that many, but uh, and the other churches too. They were very uh, active in large Sunday schools, uh, training unions, and the other churches had their MYF and whatever. Um, most people went to church back then. Uh, now. <laughs> and then, of course, we just had the downtown churches. There were well, there were a few scattered out, but, you know, the main, the Bap First Baptist, First Methodist, First Presbyterian, and the Catholics, we were all right downtown, very, very active, all of them, back in the, up to, I think, about the 60s or early 70s. Okay. But the downtown churches are all losing members, and, of course, there are other churches, too, but still, it, it's, it's sad. It really is. Why do you think that is? I don't know. People seem to have more to do, mm. and they're just—I don't know—just not interested in church anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Where was the uh, original church? The Baptist church. The original church is the same. It was the same okay. property. Okay. It was a wooden church. Are you familiar with the First Baptist Church downtown? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's on. Oh, uh, well, that address is Five Nineteen Park. But the original church was a um, small wooden building. The church was organized in 1884, and the wooden building was finished, I think, by the end of that year. It was on the corner of uh, 6th and Park, and that's where our um, brick church was built later. That okay. The wooden church was moved, and the brick church was built there in 19... Built in two parts. The uh, first section, which uh, included the Sunday school, the front part was built in 1914, and the second part, the auditorium part, was built in 1920. Then, in uh, 1949 50, the education building next door was built. Uh, Let's see. The new site, well, the um, next educational building, which is now the Chance Educational Building, which was named for our uh, former pastor who died in, well, he was a pastor in 71. It was built in 66. That's on the corner of uh, uh, Fifth and Magnolia. And in all that process, we bought all the property on that block, house by house. <laughs> <laughs> and they all had to be moved to uh, build that uh, education building. Or demolished. Some were moved, some were demolished. And then finally in uh, 1994, we broke ground during our 110th anniversary broke ground for our new sanctuary, which was we entered in August of 1995. We finally got it paid for a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> the education building sounds enormous, taking over the whole. Well, not well, the whole property. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we've got four buildings there on the. Wow. On the block. And we also have a uh, youth building, which is across the street on uh, Magnolia. Okay. Uh, you talked about the ac how active the church community was. Was was like you know the education 
Oh, yes. What, how is, um, you know, how is it active? What kind of um, events or activities did the church hold? You know, what was Sunday <laughs> service like? I don't know much about it. I don't know much about the First Baptist Church. Oh, well, we had Sunday school. We still do Sunday school and worship service on Sunday mornings. And then at night, we uh, had Baptist training union, BTU training union, whatever. Hmm. Uh, for the entire church, you know, we had different unions uh, learning. Well, in Sunday school, you learn more from the Bible, you know, like that. But in the training union, it was uh, more about um, other. Di- I remember once, you know, we had to learn about different other different religions. We learned. Um, Baptist beliefs, things to you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. And the uh, the members took parts. We were assigned parts. You know, that was a good uh, learning experience for people, especially young people. You know, getting up in front of people, and yeah. doing that was that was good. And it was also uh, a lot of socials. I remember having hay rides and <laughs> and parties and stuff with a, you know, it was a good youth group. Mm-hmm. And then the older people had their own things. But somewhere along the line, training even went out the window. I don't understand. But things change. Oh. And, uh, but we still have Sunday night church. Okay. And uh, other other things, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is your role as a church historian like? What do you do for the church? <laughs> Well, in our hundredth anniversary in ni- eight, 1984, mm-hmm. we had a big celebration. I was not chairman of the committee; I was on it. Uh, but I volunteered to write a history of the church. I, we had this little bitty book, you know. I said, well, "We ought to, we ought to have a little better than that." And I wasn't expecting to do too much. Got in there and found all the records. Ended up writing a book, I think about 270 pages. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful experience because we have a lot of uh, documents and minutes and things of all of the uh, church business meetings and, oh, just a slew of stuff. So it was, and wow. the church bulletins, you know, have information in them, so I had to go through all of that. So it was, it was a really interesting experience. Also... Nothing, none of the um, memorabilia of the church had ever been collected. It was scattered all over the church. Oh. And uh, some people knew where things were, and others, so I went scouring around trying to find all that, and I got all that collected. <clears throat> got a crew together to work on uh, kind of organizing it that year, and we had a huge display of our. Uh, all our memorabilia. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff all in the fellowship hall for the 100th anniversary. And then I had the book was published, you know, then. Since then, I have continued to collect uh, things from different people. It's amazing what things pop up still about the history. Collecting it, and then uh, I had a special room in the... Uh, Memorial Educational Building, that was the first one on, that's on Park Avenue, to collect all that stuff. Then when we built the new building in 95, they put a special heritage room in there. So I, it was supposed to be larger than what it <coughs> is. But when the cost came in for building the <laughs> church, things got squeezed. Yeah. And that did too. But I have uh, a room there and have cases around the room which were given to us by one of the local jewelry, jewelry stores. It was moving mm. or going out of business or something. So I've got that, and uh, so people can go in there and see the displays, and it gets changed occasionally. And I have an excellent um, storage room. Okay. It didn't get it didn't get squeezed. <laughs> it's still there, so I've got a good storage room for, for all kind of stuff in there. So I continue to collect things and. I've chaired the uh, anniversary committees 
every year since. Mm. But uh, now we had the 125th last year ago, February. I told them then that was my last one. Oh. I'll be almost 80 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's time for somebody else. <laughs> but it's been, it's been fun. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. What kinds of memorabilia? Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> We, one thing, we have the old pulpit, the original pulpits. Wow. From the first church and a couple of chairs. And they've gotten moved into my heritage, my storeroom there. That's mm. okay. You've got one point. Uh, we bring them out. Uh, oh, all kind of uh, paper things and lots and lots of pictures. I still take pictures of uh, important events. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I can't think of what <laughs> <laughs> there is. We've got, uh, oh, a lot of important documents, uh, the uh, incorporation papers. Mm. Uh, oh, goodness. Uh, trying to think what, what we do have. Just a, just a lot of interesting things, and we're always finding new things. It's good. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the Baptist Church was the big church force in the community, at least in the. It was the largest. Okay. Yes, it okay. Was. Mm -hmm. As I said, all the downtown churches were very active. Also, okay. But just not as large. Mm hmm. But there. Oh, we uh, uh, sponsored um, five missions, which are now churches. Wow. Yes. Central Baptist, um, Pinecrest Baptist, uh, Westview. It's changed its names two or three times. Uh, Lake Mary. Mm. It's something else now. I don't think it's even a Baptist church. <laughs> uh, well, we well, that's another story. Anyway, oh, and Victory Baptist, um, we uh, formed it as Elder Springs Baptist, but it later withdrew from the Southern Baptists and became independent, but we did organize it. But there are three that are still Southern Baptist. Hmm. How did you organize the missions and uh, get these churches started? We'd have a commissions committee that would uh, go into the neighborhoods and uh, start Sunday schools and, you know, at night. I, I, I wasn't involved in any of it, but it, and then uh, gradually as, they, as the attendance grew, you know, they'd want to become a, um, a church, and so we'd organize it. It just took several years. Okay. Pinecrest didn't take very long. Because a whole Sunday school class of ours went out there and wow. started it, a men's class. And uh, so that didn't take very long, just a few months. But the others, some of them took several years. Mm -hmm. Is there a story behind the Lake Mary? That sounded a little complicated. Well, we took them back as a mission. They oh. had been a church, and they wanted to go back in the mission status. We had not started them originally, mm. but they wanted to come back in mission status and ask us to be their sponsor. Mm. So several of our members went out there and helped them for several years, and then uh, they became a church. I know it was 83 because it was right, that was about the last thing I put in my history book. <laughs> they became a church. The... Uh, Elder Springs and Pinecrest were both organized in 57. Hmm. And uh, Central Baptist, which was originally Southside Baptist, was organized in 1938. Wow. And Westview, I think, was about six, somewhere in the early 60s. It was originally... Oakland, because it started in the, Oak I think the first uh, 
meetings I had was in the funeral home out there. Oh. <laughs> you know, the one at the, out there by Reinhardt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. one of our church members was the, uh, it was his funeral home. Mm. Uh, it, sa- it sounds from your book like you exhaustively researched everything. <laughs> <laughs> People keep asking me, you can add to the book, no way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, did you, uh, let's see, were there any big you know, personalities in the church or um, people that you wrote about in your book? Uh, stories that you could tell me about, you know, people or families in the church. <laughs> we had a pastor there, uh, Dr. Debbie P. Brooks, who was there for 33 years. Okay, wow. Yes, he was very influential, wonderful person. And he retired, he came in, I think it was 29, 1929, and retired in 62. The, uh, oh, Reverend Hyman, of course that was way before my time, but uh, he's the one that was pastor when they built the brick church. And from what I heard, he had a vision (laughs) as to how it should be built. Oh. And the first, the front part was to be the Sunday school. And that was to be, to educate the people and so forth and bring them close to God. Then uh, it would, then that would lead them into the sanctuary, which was the second part of the, something okay. like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and it was built. He built the, he was there for the first part, and then he had to go off to war. Hmm. Uh, World War One, as a chaplain. He came back, and they built the second part. And then he uh, thought that the church should more be more in the community with uh, with uh, programs and so on for the for the community, and he called it the Baptist Temple. <laughs> and they changed they they didn't ever change the name. The incorporation paper of the first Baptist church. Hmm. But on the front of the church, they had the Baptist temple, and some of our old pictures have that on there. And he was having uh, various speakers and things come in in addition to the regular church. As soon as he left, they had a meeting, and everything came down. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) There was more to it than that. You can see it in the book, but Mm -hmm. that was the... Because it was, it was mainly his his deal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are about all the general questions I have. Is there anything you'd like to talk about that we haven't yet? Any you know special um, memories that you have that you'd like to share or keep in an idea? <laughs> 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 I could tell you about a club we had. Okay. Cool. I just wrote. I wrote it. You know, I wrote for the Sanford Herald. I didn't know that. Oh, no. you did. Okay. No. Well. Yes. <clears throat> well, in high school, I wrote the celery crate news. Oh. <laughs> we had, that was our youth group. You know, oh. the, the teen group. We met second floor of Old City Hall. Uh, we had uh, pool tables. Um, ping pong, uh, all kind of board games and card games and things like that. It was, it had originally, the space had originally been an auditorium, so there was a stage up there, and, mm. day, and occasionally we'd have uh, various programs. Uh, the Sewing Creek Committee would plan the parties, we'd have about three or four parties a year, square dances, things like that. But we were open. Every Saturday night during school, just to go up and have fun, and the PTA sponsored it. 
Oh. My mother was one of the sponsors. My mother and dad were always shepherds. <laughs> uh, so that was a lot of fun. For then uh, I wrote that column. That was a freebie. Hmm. Then there was a. The Herald also had a Seminole High column. A student would write that, and so I said, "Well, I'll, since I've been writing this, I applied for that." And did that for my senior year. Got paid ten cents an inch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I was in college for one year, I wrote, um, what was it called? Oh goodness, it was a. Can you remember what it's called right now? But anyway, it was one year I wrote when I was at Stetson about uh, some old high students off at college and oh. so forth like that. And I talked to a lot of parents <laughs> because I came home quite a bit. Then in uh, 1994, I started writing the um, the way we were column, mm. and I wrote that until July of '07 when the uh, owner of the paper fired me, fired my column, mm. <laughs> and also. He also took away the Sanford column, you know, social news. Then the, when we got the new publisher, he says he wasn't, and I was all, I was writing extra things like uh, the um, um, class reunions, high school class reunions, oh. historical society. Uh, news, um, anniversaries. I wrote a couple of weddings. But the new publisher says he's not printing any of that, so he didn't need me anymore. So that mm. was <laughs> that was in uh, just about a year and a half ago. Oh, wow. Then we go, let's go back to the club. Okay. We were in fifth grade. And <clears throat> this girl, Johnny Saunders, moved here from, I think, Bradenton, and was in Miss McNabb's room, where a lot of us girls were that had grown up in Sanford. There was a, a magazine at the time called Polly Pigtails, and they encouraged people to form Polly Pigtail Clubs. So Joni came in, and she thought, I guess probably because she was new and one new friends, I don't know. Mm -hmm. She formed a, got us together and we formed a Polly Pigtail Club. <laughs> <laughs> all the girls that were in there were in Miss McNabb's room and they were all of us, several of us had grown up together and were good friends. Then through the years, sixth grade, we added some people. We went to junior high, we added some more. Some people that dropped out for various reasons and we'd add some more. We meet every Tuesday afternoon, every other Tuesday afternoons at members' homes. We had parties. Um, we uh, our, we had dues of ten cents a week. <laughs> uh, our we made had candy sales down at Farmer McRory's. Hmm. That's where we we make about eight or ten dollars a, a time. <laughs> When we got, well, after the, in the eighth grade, we decided we wanted to go to the beach for a week. So we had to have more candy sales. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. Wow. And we started, we, uh, we uh, rented this house over in New Smyrna, Sandy Shack, and went over for a week in August. Our parents were chaperones. Mm -hmm. um, we did, we went to the beach every summer for a week through our senior year. Our senior year we went, after we graduated, we went to Daytona hmm. and had this house right smack dab on the beach. Had been a restaurant, <laughs> had three bathrooms, <laughs> which was great because the other one only had one. And we'd had this all the way through school till we graduated in high school. Wow. So we were all very close. You know, it was we started out with friends that were friends anyway. 
-hmm. And we had some of the others that, and it was two of, two of the girls got married, and of mm -hmm. course we had to had to uh, let them. We couldn't let them. Our, our mothers wouldn't let them stay in the club, <laughs> 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 and so it, it was a lot of really. Really, really good, and we most of us still keep in contact. We've lost a couple to this, and but most of us are still, still around, still good friends. That's wonderful. Yeah, it was. That sounds it really, so nice. Really was. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like the community was really close. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wrote, I just wrote it again, or rewrote it for the Seminole High. A magazine that comes out every year. Oh, yeah. Well, they were they were having some articles in there about the beach because New Smyrna. We always went to New Smyrna all the time. Stayed over there and uh, weekends and day trips. And a lot of people were writing memories about the New Smyrna, about the beach. Mm -hmm. So I asked if I could write about our beach parties over there. Yeah. So I did. Because we had some experiences. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Do you want to tell us what kind of experiences happened <laughs> over there? What did you guys do? You went to the beach. You know, was there much around New Smyrna to go and do too? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sandy Shack was, uh, well, right in, it was in the zone where the the uh, lifeguards weren't. Oh. I mean, <laughs> now it's just, <laughs> you know, it's gone down so far. But, mm -hmm. but our share farms would make us go up to the, further on the beach oh, so okay. we could go to the life. Well, of course, we'd go camp right by the lifeguard tower. <laughs> <laughs> Think we were hot stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first year we were there, we were just out of the eighth grade. We went to the lifeguard dance. <laughs> Thirteen, fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> Sat over in a corner, and of course the lifeguards were much older than we were. They were high school and college kids, mostly college, I think. And I remember sitting there. It was a um, canasta was a big deal back then. I remember Tricia saying, "We should have brought our canasta car because <laughs> everybody's out there dancing, and here we were." Then. The head of the lifeguards, uh, Joe Kennard, came up and asked Jeanette to dance. <laughs> so, she didn't know how to dance. You know? <laughs> she was out there trying to do the best she could. <laughs> so she was our heroine of the night. <laughs> we did have a couple of Sanford boys that were there that would uh, that came and rescued us. <laughs> <laughs> and then once we had, uh, we met some of the, a couple of years later, we met some of the uh, New Smyrna boys, they were more age. Mm. And we had a bonfire on the beach with hot dogs, I guess, I don't remember. And invited the boys that we knew and some of the fellows that were, that usually stayed at the beach with their families when we were over there, asked them to come. Well... There, all these people showed up at our bonfire. <laughs> all these cars, all these oh. people. <laughs> our chaperones got kind of upset. <laughs> and finally, after a while, they came and shooed the others away. But that was that was something because we got a little scared too. <laughs> well, that was, yeah, we met the local uh, fellas from over there and. Uh, we, some of us dated, we dated some of them, and when we all, when there were uh, football games, any kind of sport, we always played New Smyrna and whatever. So we all would go to the games, and they'd come over, and we'd always see the New Smyrna boys. Okay. That was a big deal. And so forth. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was fun. I remember one time... Uh, a couple of boys from Sanford came over and said, let's go to the drugstore. And so a whole bunch of us jumped in. The, I think there were six or eight. About eight of us jumped in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> down 
to the drugstore. And after that, uh, one of the fellows said, where do you want to go? Let's go to Daytona. We took off to Daytona. Oh, wow. And I uh, went to the boardwalk. Of course, didn't tell our chaperones. We just <laughs> went. Didn't get home till oh, or late. Mm. So they were furious. <laughs> and we had, we had to wash the dishes, I think, for the rest of the week or something like that. <laughs> but it was worth it. Oh, yeah. We had, we had fun. We had fun. Well, those are all of my questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to mention? <laughs> you, Sanford history, teaching, anything? I don't know, but you're talking about my parents. Okay. Uh, okay. They met at Piedmont College. Oh. In Georgia. My mother went up, she was a con grew up as a Congregationalist, and that was a Congregational mm. school. And my dad was from Tennessee, and his uh, sisters, one of his sisters was teaching there. He was the youngest, next to the youngest of a family of ten. Wow. So he and his brother decided to go down to Piedmont College. And they met there. And Mother just stayed for two years. You could teach after two years then. Mm. And uh, then Dad graduated in 25. He was he sang in a uh, quartet, male quartet, that traveled with uh, uh, advertising the college. Oh, all up into the east, eastern states. Now that was something for him, all of them, especially my dad and his brother, because they'd never been anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I've got his diaries at home telling about all their experiences, staying in homes, staying in hotels, and YMCAs, and mm. all this, and singing, and mostly in, in uh, churches, and uh, all that, all like that. And uh, they traveled for one year after he graduated. He graduated in 25, and they traveled for one year. And they'd been traveling in summers or before that. And so in the fall of 26, he came to Sanford and got a job at Chase and Company. Stayed there for 40 years. Wow. <laughs> uh, be became uh, head of the building material department. And he and mother got married in July 6, 1927. <laughs> Did you have any brothers and sisters? No, I was an only child. They were oh. married nine years before I was born. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is... Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome.